looked like back to business as usual this morning in Harare. Well, it's, it's sort of back to business as usual, uh, Dan, but uh, the country is still reeling from the shock of the death of those three people yesterday in that confrontation and the violence that took place on the streets of Harare during that protest by members or shall we say people who um, were protesting about the results and some of whom um, was seen to be supporting Nelson Chamisa and the MDC. Uh, it, le it ended up with those confrontations, of course, between police initially, uh, and there were some shots that were fired, and then later on there was the intervention of the military. What you're seeing behind me, what we are showing you, is the cleanup campaign uh, that is taking place this morning, particularly in the area where the uh, violence and the battles uh, were fought uh, between the protesters and the police, and then later on the army. Uh, the area in front of Rainbow Towers Hotel uh, Precinct, which also houses the Harare International Convention Center, which is, of course, at the moment, the National Results Center for the ZEC. It was the center, it, it, the, that precinct behind us was uh, the center of uh, focus for the anger of the protesters because that's where the counting and tallying of votes is taking place and that's where really the verification is taking place ahead of the, the release of the results of the presidential election. So late last night, uh, yesterday, the police uh, minister, uh, the Home Affairs Minister, working with the police commissioner, uh, invoking Section 37 uh, of the Public Order and Security Act that controversial act uh, that has over the years been uh, blamed for a clampdown on opposition activity, on public gatherings, and really the freedoms and civil liberties of Zimbabweans, uh, that section was invoked, allowing for the army to take part in assisting police to bring law and order in Zimbabwe. Tulasiza, does this act mean, the invoking of this act mean that uh, public gatherings have now been banned in Zimbabwe? Well, at this point, then, it seems what the police are encouraging people to do is to, if they don't need to be out and about, uh, they should remain at home. Uh, and also saying that those who are going to work should go to work and go straight home. Um, I did hear the police commissioner, I think it was, saying exactly that. So, I mean, you can only imagine if basically the people are being urged to restrain, you know, sort of restrict their movements to only necessary movements, um, I, it does suggest to me that any other activity is not being contemplated. I will have to check um, and come back to you on whether, in fact, this is indeed a, a, a complete ban on public, uh, uh, you know, gatherings and protests. But you will understand, then that this comes just after the voting day, which was on Monday. But even before then, there was already tension that had been growing. Um, I mean, the opposition had been marching to the offices of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, which is just across the road from where we are standing. Uh, that, that particular building had been the focus of opposition protests for quite some time, even before uh, the, uh, the, the, the election day itself. Uh, and at one point, there had been warnings by the government, uh, by various people in government who had been saying that the opposition should not take the tolerance uh, of the Zimbabwe police and the state machinery as being weakness. In fact, it's a line I heard from Obed Mbofu, the Home Affairs Minister, uh, again last night, saying that the tolerance and understanding should not be mistaken for weakness. Uh, as we saw, of course, yesterday, that uh, clampdown from the military coming in. In fact, la late last night, the police spokesperson, Charity Charamba, uh, saying and using a language that is familiar to me, that I he I've heard in the past, being used against uh, opposition activists, saying that they are keen, uh, they are inviting, quote-unquote, uh, Tendai Biti and uh, another MDC alliance official, Herpesin Chidziva, uh, to come to uh, police CID uh, law and order section. Uh, they, they are keen to have a conversation with them. In the past, that only meant that they basically wanted to arrest people. We don't know if that means that is the case this time around, but uh, the police are inviting BT and Chidziva, uh, according to Charity Charamba, uh, to, to help them understand uh, what transpired uh, in the protests 
riots that took place yesterday. Of course, the police are holding uh, uh, BT and uh, Nelson Chamisa, the MDC leader, responsible uh, for the violence that took place, as we heard from the police uh, minister. Of course, the opposition itself saying that, I mean, how do you hold us responsible? You are the ones who pulled the trigger. Uh, it's the people who pulled the trigger who fired live rounds, automatic weapons in the city center at protesters. The opposition insisting that their protests were peaceful and saying that uh, the spokesperson, the Nkululegos Banda of the MDC, saying that they know that this happens in dictatorships, that they, they will plant, uh, the dictatorship will plant people uh, to be at the forefront of protests and uh, trigger violence and then react after that. And he says he has no doubt that is what happened here yesterday.